Let me start with faces first. Faces. Think of a face as a side. Okay? You'll see my cube up there has six faces. One on top, one on the bottom, one on the right, one on the left, and one in front and one in the back. So we say this cube here has six faces. All right, six faces. Edges, edges. Edges are the sides of the face. Here you go, let me highlight a couple for you. Here's an edge. It's the sides of the faces. Uh, here's another edge. And if I keep going here, in total, I should have 12 edges here. I should have 12 edges total. And the last thing is vertices of a polyhedron. Vertices. That is the endpoints of a, of a edge. The endpoints of an edge. Please, here's the big mistake kids make right away. They count vertices twice. You can only count one vertice once. Okay, so just make sure you don't count them again. And here we have eight vertices. All right, now, I just mentioned, hey, there might be... Even the great ones make mistakes, even the great ones. It could happen that you count a vertice or an edge twice. So what I have for you right now is a check to make sure you have the correct amount of faces, edges, and vertices. And if you want to know a little history, I'm even going to throw in a little math history today. All right. This was found by a mathematician named Leonard, Leonard Euler. So they, he named his formula after him, Euler's formula. And here's what it says. Every single time, the number of faces plus the number of vertices minus the number of edges. And this is unbelievable. No matter what the polyhedron is, that always comes out to be two. Always. Always. Look at the cube we just did. Six plus eight minus 12. Boop. Two spot. No matter what the polyhedron is, it will always check into Euler's formula. All right, Leonard Euler. All right, next up, I have a pyramid. There's my pyramid. Now I'm going to start uh, calling on you guys. Let's get rolling. Faces. How many faces on this pyramid? Oh, where's my cheat sheet? How many faces on my pyramid here? Five. Hayden, how many faces? Uh, five. Five as well. Look at that convenience. Edges. How many edges are on here? Be careful. Don't count things twice. Oh, Vinny, how many edges? Eight. Eight. There we go. And finally, how many vertices here for my pyramid? How many vertices? Be careful. Uh, Caroline, how many vertices? Five. Five as well. And if you check, take a look, everyone. Ten, five plus five minus eight. Oh, it's two again. Unbelievable, these mathematicians. And then number three. Anybody know what we call number three? So we had a cube. We had a pyramid. Anybody know what three is called? We're going to deal with those today. A prism. More importantly, a triangular prism because the bases are triangles, so a triangular prism. So go ahead, here we go. Faces, edges, vertices. Faces, what do you got for me? Oh, look at everyone in here. Omni, how many faces? Five. Five faces. Yep, five faces. How many edges here? How many edges? Take your time if you don't have it. Uh, oh, and how many edges? Nine. Nine. And finally, how many vertices on this triangular prism? Uh, Kyla, how many vertices? Six. Six. Good work, everybody. And then, hey, five plus six minus nine. Oh, shocker. It's two. Right? All right. Questions? All right. Next section, which is called cross sections. You guys at home, I'm going to put a link in the chat right now. And I'd like you to go to this website so you can do this with us in class. Because I think talking about it does, it does it no justice. We actually have to see it and perform it ourselves. So here you go, you guys at home. I'm going to throw a little uh, 
link into the chat right now. And I appreciate it if you go there. Um, Mr. Cutting, I have a question. Yeah, sure. So say we were to deal with like a cylinder, right? Would it have three faces? Like uh it would have correct three. Okay. There's two circles on top. How many vertices would it have? Uh I would say no vertices. So what is I'm just guessing though. Face? What's that? So what does spear just have one face? Here we go. I never thought of this. Probably because I have 80 tabs open. Like you could count where the cylinder part meets the circle, vertices, which would make it two above. So it's three faces, no vertices. What about two? One face. One face, no vertices. Uh -huh. Cone, that makes sense. The bottom and the rest of it, yep. And the vertices would be on top. Okay, good questions. All right, so you guys have your uh, GeoGebra. Now what I'm going to talk about is a concept called cross sections, which basically means, hey, I'm going to take a plane and my polyhedron. I'm going to take the plane and slice it vertically, horizontally, diagonally. I'm going to open it up, and then I want to know what shape I end up having. And that's called a cross section. All right, so for instance, let's first go to... Rectang sections of rectangular, it should say prisms, it's getting cut off, but bottom left-hand corner here, sections of rectangular prisms. So you guys can see it provides a rectangular prism for you. And notice how I'm cutting it horizontally right now. What's the cross section? What shape is the cross section in right now? It is a? Also, also a rectangle. Now, do you think it'll change depending on how I cut it? Or will it always be a rectangle? Like if I cut it vertically, do you think it'll still be a rectangle or something different? This is why we're going to try it out. Ready? Where it says rotate one, where it's going from horizontal to vertical over to the right. Let's start playing around with it. Right now it's a horizontal cut. As I start playing around with it, oh, look when I cut it diagonally, it looks still like a rectangle. And if you go full vertical, Full vertical would be nice. You guys probably can do this quicker. There you go. It still stays a rectangle. So the cross section is that orange shape in the center, not correct. The that basically is showing you, uh, Sophia. If I cut it here, open that rectangular prism up, it's going to be a rectangle, right? Like take if I take my tissue box right now, I slice it right down the middle and I hold up half of it to you. What's going to be facing you? A rectangle. Right. That's yeah, a, that's called a cross actual, section. Like, yeah. All right. Everyone all right there, cross section. Now, does that mean it's always going to be a rectangle? Well, no, it depends on the figure. Go ahead right now and go to a cone right now for me. Top of the page right here. Left-hand side, top of the page, sections of cones. Ready? If I do a horizontal cut, what's, it st what's the cross section? Circle. Makes sense, right? I'm going to get a circle. All right, watch what happens, though. Start going horizontal to vertical and watch that shape change pretty quickly. It ends up being, when I do a full vertical cut, the cross section ends up being, yours is quicker than mine, obviously. It ends up being a triangle. So it all depends on how we cut this figure on what the cross section is going to be, okay? Everyone okay on the concept of cross-section? I will always tell you how it's going to be cut, too, all right? So there's no confusion. I'll tell you how we're going to cut the figure, and then I'll ask for the cross-section. And we could play around with other ones as well. You go to spheres, shocking. It's a circle every time, no matter how it's cut. All right, cylinder, a little different. Okay, you'll see if I do a horizontal cut, it's a little bit different than a vertical cut, the cross-sections. How's everyone doing? Just like playing around there a little bit? 
All right, so let's answer some uh, questions. Which figure can have the same cross section as the sphere? So if you guys wanna go to the interactive part right now and you do a sphere, it's always gonna be what? What's the cross section always gonna be? A circle. So how else, what other figure can I get a cross section of a circle from up here? The cone, which we just uh, went over. What's up? I have a question, is 58 just a half? Yes, correct, okay. correct. Thank you. Yep. Two, all right, if I cut a cone horizontally, the cross section would also be a circle. So yep, for example one, the cone would also give me the same cross section as a sphere. Okay, all right, and then I like this one a lot. Which drawing can I not get from a cross section of a cone? So horizontally, vertically, diagonally, which one of those am I never gonna see as a cross section of a cone as I go through it? And you guys, hey, that's what I have you guys open to the GeoGebra cross sections for. Try it out, all right, if you want. If you can't think about it in your head right now, go ahead, try it out. Slowly go from your horizontal to your vertical cut and see which one of these figures you will never ever see. Is always going to be kind of like a flat sheet. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. No thickness to it. Okay. All right. Which one do we never see? Uh, here we go. Oh, once again, Kyla, which one do we not see? The square. Yep. We never see the square. Everything else we'll see depending on which uh, way we cut it. All right. Questions on cross sections. Half of your homework tonight is going to come from the packet, which are all cross-section questions. So if you want to go back, I don't know if you guys want to bookmark this or not. If it helps you out uh, later tonight, feel free to use it. Absolutely. Okay, it's not cheating. All right, now we get into the meat of the unit. That was just kind of a little intro here. Now we get into the meat of it, which is lateral area versus surface area. Okay, lateral area versus surface area. Today, we're gonna to talk about prisms, which as you can see here, prism, a polyhedron with two parallel congruent bases. That's how you know where the bases are. It's the only, only two figures that are parallel and congruent to each other. So in this one right up here, what, are your ba what shape are the bases? The bases are what shape? Not rectangles. What are the only two figures that are congruent and parallel to each other here? Those are in what shape? We just finished the unit on polygons, so those are Pentagon. pentagons. Okay, so if you wanted to be fancy and impress people later, this would be a pentagonal prism. You always name it using their base. Okay, pentagonal prism. Like which one's supposed to be parallel, congruent bases? I have no idea what you're asking. In the diagram, which of a pentagonal prism, where are the two parallel congruent bases? They're the pentagons. Oh, oh, so yeah. Okay. I know what the bases yeah. are. I know what the bases are of a prism because they're the only two figures that are parallel and congruent. I'm making parallel lines. Okay. None of the rectangles up there are parallel and congruent, so it's got to be the two pentagons. All right, difference between lateral and surface area, because I am going to ask you for the values of both today. So what is the difference? Lateral area. Lateral area. How many faces on that pr pectagonal prism? How many faces? In total, how many faces? I should have, there should be seven, correct? Five of the rectangles and two pentagons. Lateral area is the area of everything, and I'm gonna write this down officially in a second. Lateral area is the area of everything minus the bases. Take the bases off and tell me what the area of everything else remaining is. Go. What would that be used for, like why? Like why, like why do we use that thing? Like why would you ever need to use that thing? Here we go. I'll do my lateral area in life. 
sure there's a reason. Of course, they're going to tell me surface area, not lateral area. I think it's just the concept of it, Omni. Okay. Like if I had, okay, for instance, if I had a cylinder. If I had a cylinder, like a big gap, I, for whatever reason, I wanted to paint it. But I don't want to paint the tops and the bottoms. So I would say instead, well, I don't want the surface area of it. I only want the lateral area painted. Instead, I think it's just a vocabulary term. Okay. Or if I, okay, here, or if I had, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. Anybody ever seen those rollers that uh, smooth down the blacktop on the, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, the rollers that smooth down the blacktop at all. How much, sur how much surface area could it cover in one roll? Well, you're not finding surface area, right? Because these, the bases don't cover the area. It would only be this right here. So it would technically be the lateral area. Okay. That's my best explanation for you. Okay, so lateral area is the area of everything excluding the bases. I'll make it this official. So it's the area of a polyhedron's, and this goes for anything, the area of a polyhedron's faces excluding the bases. Now we get to a little rhyme time, right? How do you know which surface? As long as they're parallel to the right Say that again? And something like the right something that shows up there, well, how would you know? I will go over what rule we'll follow in a second. Because there's one, there's the rectangular one, which you're kind of like, which one are the bases? I'll go over the rule in a second. All right. Excluding the bases. And then surface area, guess what we're going to add in now? The bases. It's everything now. Find the area of every single figure now. All right, that's the area of all faces. Yes, Kyla. So the lateral area, when you say exclude the bases, yep. you're talking about the uh, the congruent bases. The, the ones two, that are congruent? The, correct. The two parallel congruent bases we are taking off okay. and finding the area of everything that remains. All right. So let's talk here. Oh, question? Sort of like a, um, a box, like a square box, whatever it's called. Um, would there, like, what would be the... Base. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going to have you guys follow a rule. Okay. Good. All right. I'm going to skip over to number two here. All right. Let's do number two because that's just a classic example of lateral and surface area before I get to number one, which is a box. All right. Here's number two. Triangular prism. Does everyone agree that the bases are triangles? They're the only two that are congruent and parallel. So those are my bases. So when I ask you first, for lateral area, we are going to take the two triangular bases off and find the area of everything else that remains and add it together. Ryan, how many faces up here? For the square. No, no, for my number two here, this triangular prism. How many total faces? Five. Take off the two bases, so we're only going to find the area of the three rectangles now. All right, everyone at home, all right. Lateral area will be the area of all three rectangles added up. All right, no problem. I see the bottom one is 12 by 16. So 12 times 16 plus, I see the one to the left is nine by 16. And then I see the one to the right is 16 by, ah. I probably wouldn't write that in though. Everyone agrees it's 16 by yikes not too sure on that one holy gee this is the last geometry unit of the year i think we could find that side 
What do you think, Audrey? We can find that side? Probably. Probably, I hope. Using what? Yes, thank you. 9 squared plus 12 squared equals that side we're looking for squared. Oh, yeah. Anytime it's area, we always square the units, correct. Audrey, you got that for me? Okay. 15. Yep. So there you go, 15. That's why it's helpful to have your calculator with you today. Lateral area, 576, and Omni and I just had this conversation. It's lateral area, lateral area. So yes, the units are still squared. That'll change when we get to the second half and we can uh, do a little volume, but all good. Why lateral, now lateral area? I take off the bases, find everything that's left. Now part B says, find the surface area now. Now it's everything, everything on the outside, everything. So my surface area, we already know what the lateral area is, 576. Now I include the two bases I just took off, which are in what shape? Triangle. Triangles. Two of them times, we just finished the unit, area formula, one half BH. Yes, it, yes, creative minds will see that now, that when you do the area of two triangles, the one half and the two, essentially, I don't like to say cancel out, but they become one, and you just end up doing BH. So two times a half, and because it is a right triangle, those are the two legs, the base and the height, nine and 12. And then we end up with, what do I have here, 684? And can we have a quick common sense conversation? Surface area should always be what compared to the lateral area? Thank you, bigger, greater than, I hope so, if we're adding in bases. Questions on lateral or surface area right now before I get to our controversial one over here, number one. Okay, here we go with number one. We go right, hey, let's find the lateral area. Ah, what are the bases? Right, because there's actually three pairs of figures that are congruent and parallel. You got the left and the right, you got the top and the bottom, you got the front and the back. What do you want me to count as the bases, Carlino, so I can take them off? What's the deal? All right, we're gonna follow this very easy rule. However it's drawn, however it's positioned in the drawing, the top and the bottom will be the bases. Okay, the top and the bottom. Well, somebody asked me first period and I was ready to put them in a headlock. Well, what if it's tilted at a 60 degree angle? We really don't have top and bottom. Thanks, Maeve. It wasn't Maeve though. You good? Yeah, we're trying. I'll just take it, Maeve. Right. Thanks, Thank you. you have a good one. Thank you. Well, what happens if it's tilted 60 degree? I, I, will not, I won't do that to you. It'll be either horizontally or vertically up for you. So in this case, here are the bases, the top and the bottom. Let's just, everyone all right with that rule. If you're dealing with a rectangular prism, how it's positioned and drawn, the top and the bottom will be your bases. All right, so lateral area are the four faces that are left over. So let me go right and left first. There's two of them that are congruent and they're both three by three. So that takes care of the right and left face. There's also a front and a back face. There's two of them that are congruent and what are their dimensions? 10 by three. So that takes care of the four faces that are left. Our lateral area, 78 square inches. And finally, surface area. 
Now let's add in the top and the bottom we just uh, took off. So 78 plus, what's the dimensions of the top and the bottom now? That's what I was thinking, 10 by 3. And there's two of them. One hundred and thirty eight square inches. Any questions from you guys on the prisms, Sophia? Um, the sake of when you're on test, you label them separately as LA and SA. If it's a part A and B question, I would prefer that, yes. But if it just comes out and says find the surface area, I don't need you to write SA. I, I know you're finding the surface area. All right, so there's a uh, all your prisms. Let's go to a circular prism. But we have an actual name for that. Nice little special name for a circular prism. Also called a cylinder. All right, cylinder. All right, let's think about this. Lateral area. We, he just told me lateral area is take off the bases and then find the area of what's left over. I think I got a problem though. If you take a cylinder, take off the top and the bottom, what the heck's left over? Isn't it another cylinder? All right, everyone. So how can I find the lateral area if you're never going to give me another shape, like a rectangle or anything else? Well, here we go. Let's actually go into more depth now. You don't go to this. I'm just going to show you up here, please. Here you go. On your screen, I got cylinder. Let me take the top off. Top's coming off. Let's take the bottom off. What do you say? All right, now everyone see what's left. Another cylinder? How are we gonna find the area of that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it. And you can see that vertical line start being drawn down. I'm gonna start cutting it. And when I open it up, what's it form? A rectangle. Wait, what forms a rectangle? Can we find the area of a rectangle? What is the formula? Area of a rectangle. Okay, base times height, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. I want you actually to give a name to base and height as far as the cylinder goes. Let me wrap it back up again. All right, everyone ready? Let's open it up. What's one side, and I already labeled it here for you, but what is one side of that rectangle? That was the one of the cylinder. The height, that's the height of the cylinder. One side of that rectangle is the height of the cylinder. So part of my formula is gonna be something times the height, right? Because hey, here's what I just got. I just got a rectangle, here's the height. Now I need your help. What the heck is this part up here now? Because it's gonna be height times whatever that is. Let's dig deep. Go back. Watch. What's that top part? Give me a good geometry vocab. Oh, this is the circumference, isn't it, what I'm looking for? That was the circumference of the circle I had originally start before I opened it up. Everyone agree? All right. Dig even deeper. What's the formula? H times pi D. Pi D, right? Pi times diameter. So you guys just found out the lateral area of a cylinder. Pi DH. Because it's a rectangle where one side's the height, the other side is the circumference. Length times width, pi DH. All right, let's put the circles back on now. Put the circles back on. What's my surface area then? Lateral area, pi DH plus two pi r squared. Why two? You got, you got two circles. So pi dh plus two pi r squared. Questions? Not on your formula sheet either. Not on your formula sheet. Pi dh for the lateral area, pi dh plus two pi r squared for the surface area. All right, here you go, number three. 
I'm just going to do one, one of each from each section here. Find the lateral area. Pi D H. Diameter, I'm usually everything's given to you here, so 10. Now I know two's the left over, so it's got to be the height, but I want you to understand why it's the height. Height, height always connects the bases. All right, it's an edge that always connects the bases. All right, the height will always, it's the segment that connects the bases. All right, how long is it from base to base? That's your height, that's why it's two here. So you end up with 20 pi centimeters squared. Nearest tenth, read the directions. Eight pi square meters. All good? I don't know. I don't know why, because that's the answer to the next one, Sophia. That's why. I just gave that away. That's the answer to the next one. 62.8. How about that? And then I'm going to go to number five. In terms of pi now, because we are dealing with a circle, anytime we deal with the circle, we could leave our answer in terms of pi. And this is surface area now. So that lateral area, pi dh, now add on the two circles, pi r squared, 2 pi r squared. Pi, diameter, 2. Everyone see what I mean by the height? The distance between the bases. 3 plus 2 pi. Don't need 2 now. I need 1 for the radius. Make sure we, uh, we're good there because... Half of the formula deals with diameter, the other half deals with radius. Pay attention to that. Now, we could not do this last unit. Can we do it now? Can I add those together? I'm so rattled. Can we add those together? Yes, both of them have pies. So we can have 8 pi in terms of pi meters squared. Ready. I, I'm going to do one of these at the end of every class this unit. Let's take the two figures we know and put them together. Let's smush them together. Find the surface area. Now, oh, before we start, because I'm not even too sure if we're going to be able to finish this one, I hope. Is it as easy as find the surface area of the cube, add it to the surface area of the cylinder, add those two together, we're done. Is it that easy? No, it's not. Surface area, everything on the outside that's showing. If something is covered up, we cannot count it towards surface area. All right, it's everything on the outside that's showing. All right, is everything on the outside showing? No. Let's talk to me about the cube first. Let's talk the cube. And yes, there are going to be multiple ways of getting to the final answer. I'm just going to show one way. How many faces in the cube? Total. How many total faces? Six. Six. How many are fully showing? Five. five, right? So I'm going to start this off by saying five of the faces are full faces, not covered up. And each one of them is five by five. Agreed? All right, let's talk about that six face, because I can't say five times five, can I? Because that six face up here is being covered up by a circle. Part of it's being covered up by a circle. So anybody want to help me out? How can I represent the surface area of that six face? Basically, what's showing here? How can I represent this area right now, that surface area? Lucas? Okay, oh, so I'm going to say... Plus, right, here comes the sixth face. And you don't have to do it this way. This is the way I'm teaching it. Sixth face is five by five 
minus, though, the area of the circle that's covering up. Pi r, which would be if the diameter is 4, radius of 2 squared. So there's the cube, everybody. See how we work that. Correct. Yes, that, there's multiple ways of doing that. Correct. And then the cylinder. Can I do full on surface area of the cylinder? No, I can do lateral area. And only how many bases? How many bases are showing? One. Just one. So instead of doing 2 pi r squared, I'm only going to do 1 pi r squared because one base is covered up. One circle is being covered up. So pi diameter 4, height 4, plus pi radius of 2 squared. You can only do surface area for what is showing on the outside. If something is being covered up, you cannot count it. And then we're going to add these two together. Uh, yeah, go nearest 10th for me. And hopefully you're getting 200.3 square inches. I found the area of the... Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I... Oh, I didn't find the area of the whole cylinder. I found the area of the lateral. And then you got to add in a circle. Omni. Can you just find the lateral area of the cylinder? Have you. Correct. Yep. Any other questions? Again, one way of getting there. You guys just heard two different ways in class of also getting there. All right, you're going to have one of those on tonight's homework, so I just wanted to prep you for it. Any questions at home about anything? Lateral area versus, now remember too, homework tonight, half of it's in your packet, half of it's in the book. Okay, you got uh, five multiple choice questions in your packet, and then one, two, three, four, five questions in the book. Make sure you show work just like you did last unit, because you're only going to find answers on classroom. All right? We'll go over any issues you got tomorrow before we start the new figures. Have a good one, guys. Be smart. Be safe tonight.